Um, it gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, the Honourable Robin Lamley, Minister for Health in the Northern Territory, to come and, and uh, give a talk in terms of uh, her vision um, and her role as the Minister in the Territory. Robin. Thanks, Marion. Um, I'd firstly like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, the Aranda people, past and present. Thank you to Amelia for the lovely welcome to country and Andrew for the, the beautiful prayer earlier. Um, it is indeed my pleasure to be here uh, this morning to celebrate um, two birthdays, AMSANT and Congress. Um, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Marion. Uh, we miss her in Parliament. Uh, she uh, was certainly a force to be reckoned with and, and someone who has um, made enormous contributions to the health and welfare of people throughout the Northern Territory. I'd like to acknowledge Donna Archie, the CEO of, um, of Congress, Central Australian Aboriginal Congress. Also John Patterson and his board uh, for, um, from AMSAND, of course. Also the board of Congress, uh, William Tillmouth, Chippy Miller and the other members of the board. Um, unfortunately, um, uh, the Assistant Minister for uh, Health, Federal Assistant Minister Fiona Nash couldn't make it. Um, I'm sure we're all looking forward to uh, chewing her ear uh, over the next two days, but uh, we'll have to um, make that possible uh, at some other point in time. But um, uh, just watching that, um, that film, um, I might borrow it and take it to my cabinet colleagues. Uh, it was uh, very informative and, and indeed a celebration. You should all be incredibly proud of, uh, of the achievements over the last 40 years for um, Congress and 20 years AMSANT. Um, I've only been in the Territory for just over 20 years and it seems like um, uh, just uh, the time has gone so quickly. I'm sure for those of you who are involved right from the beginning, it must be an incredible experience. But um, uh, you now have 26 member services across the Northern Territory. Uh, that's incredible. When I first became Health Minister, um, only just over um, 18 months ago, my mission was to just get out there and see as many um, clinics as I could, um, in, in remote areas, obviously. Um, we've got about 79 across the, the Northern Territory. Um, and one thing that struck me was uh, the, um, the better clinics were the ones that had Aboriginal people employed in them. Um, and I have to say, the best ones are Aboriginal community controlled. It just sticks out like a sore thumb. Um, I uh, had the pleasure of going on a trip recently with the MeWatch crew. Um, I'm sure Eddie's out there somewhere. If he's not, he'd be on his way, I'd imagine. Um, he, uh, he very carefully staged my, um, my trip. We went to Galawinku first and then we went to Millingimbi. Uh, Galawinku, I was just completely bowled over. What an amazing clinic that is with over half the staff uh, being Aboriginal. Um, and most of the uh, departments or sections within that clinic are um, completely run by Aboriginal people. Um, most impressed with the, uh, the mental health service run by three incredible um, local Aboriginal people, um, fully qualified Aboriginal health practitioners who uh, do all the case management, the monitoring and medication. They run the whole thing with the, um, uh, the help and supervision of the... Um, the, the visiting uh, psychiatrist and also uh, the um, psychiatric nurse that's on hand covering the region, I understand. And then he took me to Millingimbi, which is a government-owned clinic with incredible staff that work hard. It's a beautiful clinic, but um, just the contrast was stark. And I think that's, uh, that was a very clever way of demonstrating to me, once again, that... Uh, um, uh, community control is, um, is something that this government should be considering and something that I'm definitely committed to. Um, we've got um, a few uh, communities that we've 
focused on already to um, start the process of handing back or handing over community control to. Um, I'm doing a lot of work out at Water Air at the moment uh, from an economic development perspective, but um, that, that community has expressed um, a desire to have more input into their uh, health service and we're working with them to build their um, governance structure and, and allow for that to, um, for, for, for the gradual um, handover of that community one day to the local people. They're very excited about it and, um, and we're doing, uh, we've also targeted a few other communities. Mill and Gimney obviously is, is one of them. Uh, but uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to Fiona Nash is because obviously Obviously we need resources. You need resources too. That was high on your list of uh, requests in the early days. Uh, we as a government need resources to help you to uh, transition to community control. And um, I know that the, uh, the federal government, uh, the f former Labor <coughs> federal government had a commitment to that, uh, the regionalisation process a few years ago. That seems to have um, uh, faltered, it's, uh, it's stagnated, uh, but we need, a, we need to continue that regardless. So um, the Northern Territory Government is indeed uh, committed to uh, targeting a few communities and, move, and, and, and uh, commencing that uh, discussion around community control. A very exciting part of, of my work and um, uh, something that is totally consistent with, um, with what you're all, all on about, the obvious um, Aboriginal control of Aboriginal um, health services. Uh, the other piece of work that we're working on, which goes um, hand in hand with this, is um, addressing the declining numbers of Aboriginal health practitioners across the Northern Territory, something that has um, quite frankly alarmed me. Um, uh, in the Department of Health alone, we've had a 20% decrease in the number of health practitioners over the last 10 years. So we've um, launched a strategy called Back on Track, which um, uh, is already seeing results. I know in Watt Air alone, um, the word got out fairly quickly that we were keen to get Aboriginal workers back into the clinic. And um, our target of, uh, of um, employing three Aboriginal health practitioners um, in 12 months' time has already been achieved. The Bush Telegraph, as we know in the Territory, is uh, a very powerful thing. Once word gets out, um, you know, things start to change and happen. So that's, that's been a, already a very um, positive um, step, I guess, in terms of correcting that, that problem that uh, has um, come about over a long period of time. I've asked um, three people to be a part of the task force overseeing that the Back on Track initiative. I've asked um, John Patterson, Donna Archie and um, Marion Scrimjaw, uh, just the three of them, to join me uh, on that task force to push that. Uh, the reason being uh, they're three very scary people and uh, they, if, any, if anything, if anyone's going to make this happen, this change, uh, I think it's uh, those three people with, um, with me taking instruction from them. <laughs> Um, but look, happy birthday to all of you. Am Sant, um, 20 years, Congress, um, 40 years. I, I, I will be around for the 50th celebration, so I can't assure you that I'll be Health Minister, but um, keep me on the guest list. Uh, I wish you all the best for the next two years of um, uh, two days of deliberations, and uh, it's great to see everyone here from across the Territory and our visitors from interstate. Thank you very much. I don't think we're that scary, Minister. <laughs> but we, we did welcome your call to have a look at that inquiry back on track to look at Aboriginal health practitioners. And I, I, we did come out congratulating you and I congratulate you again in front of everyone. I think that uh, it's a brave, bold, courageous move because I think if we look at the future of Aboriginal health in the Northern Territory, it is in the hands of Aboriginal health practitioners and that is the way forward. So I, I congratulate you and, on your decision to do that.